Hi everyone, welcome to tutorial 54 of our introductory Python for image processing tutorial series. Now in the last tutorial, we looked at how we can use texture uh, for segmentation. Now let's apply that to a real world application, which is Scratch Essay Analysis. Okay, and just a quick note about Scratch Essay Analysis. I'm pretty sure if you're a biologist, you know exactly what that is. If you're not a biologist, don't skip this video because there is some cool information, some useful information in this video that may be applied to your uh, image processing needs, whether it is material sciences or geosciences or even some other field. So uh, Scratch Essay is, or the wound healing essay, it's a standard technique for uh, looking at this uh, collective cell migrations, okay, in two dimensions. What does that mean? Well, you put a whole, a monolayer of uh, cells onto a glass slide, and then you take a pipette and basically create, uh, scratch it, or create, or simulate a wound. Okay, so you have a bunch of cells, and then you're scratching it, and you're simulating a wound. And then the migration of cells into the uh, gap uh, is observed or quantified over several hours using a microscope. So every few hours, let's say every half an hour, you're looking at this gap and trying to see how the gap is closing, which means the wound is healing, okay? So the primary information that's uh, that people look at here uh, is the rate of gap closure. Now, of course, in reality, they may put some sort of a reagent or something. You know, if you're from a pharmaceutical industry, you probably put something that is supposed to heal the wound faster. So you kind of do different experiments to quantify how fast the wound is healing. But in summary, you're looking at the rate of this gap closure. Now, to give you more context, here is uh, I'll show you a paper that's got excellent information about this. But uh, here is at time zero. Let's say uh, your wound and at uh, uh, let's say after half an hour the wound closes and closes and closes and eventually what you're trying to say is after every so much time you're looking at the area of this uh, scratched region and then you're trying to basically fit it to an equation basically you're plotting it to get an idea of how fast the wound is healing now this paper let me jump on to this paper it actually talks about uh, you know, of course sample preparation uh, techniques and uh, in general the image processing uh, step and it's it's a pretty useful paper and i'll add description to this paper or link to this uh, as part of uh, you know my description on this uh, youtube video but uh, this is a great uh, paper and as you can see i'm not sure exactly what microscope obviously this is a zeiss microscope uh, but you can see the experimental setup right here Okay, and finally, the result that they are looking at is, and again, they are making a point that, okay, you draw a straight line in this scratched region, not much going on, okay? Uh, so you kind of have to quantify this somehow, quantify the scratched region somehow. Um, so I'm not going to follow whatever technique they're uh, mentioning over there. I'm going to show you how to do pretty much the same thing using a few lines of code. Okay, so let's jump into our spider IDE. And again, I have a folder with a few images, like with time equals to zero. Again, keep an eye on this resolution. I hit this again, Windows way of looking at images, but look at, uh, you cannot use histogram to separate this region from this. So we have to use a texture metric uh, to quantify that region. So uh, we have images uh, after so many, uh, you know, few hours. And then if I open one of these images, you can see how the gap is closing. But then again, it can be uh, very challenging to actually uh, quantify this scratched region. So let's try to do that. As usual, I'm importing our uh, libraries from last uh, video again. So thresholding and then entropy for quantifying this disorder and so on. And in addition, I'm also importing glob. Again, please watch my video on how to work with multiple files. Glob is a way of, uh, it makes it easy for you to walk through the directories and look at the file structure so you can import multiple images. Now, I initiated the time as time equals to zero, and then I'll put like time steps later on, and I put a scale of 0 0.45. In this case, my pixel uh, size is 0.45 microns per pixel. Again, the reason I put this is if I want my final values as square microns and not as square pixels. And I initiated uh, time list and area list. So what I'm gonna do is capture my time stamps into a list, 
okay, a Python list, and my areas that I'm about to calculate into a Python list so I can easily plot them. That's all this is. And the path to my images are images underscore, I mean, uh, and then scratch essay, right? So uh, from my root folder, I have to come to images and scratch essay. That's all these lines are. So let's go ahead and run these lines. Okay, so nothing much going on here. Now I want to go walk, use glob to load each image. So how do we, uh, I think I should, in case again, you haven't watched my other video, let's just go ahead and see print file. Okay, and let me run only these two lines so you know what exactly is going on. So, oh, okay, that's not the, uh, sorry, that's not the right way to actually, uh, silly of me because uh, of course it's going to print file that many times because I put this in quotations so I just need to print the file right so what I'm trying to show you here is when it's walking through these path now let's just go ahead and print file so you can see that okay each time it goes through now uh, scratch 0 1 2 3 4 all the way to 9 right so these are the images we need to be uh, loading so uh, what do we do as part of this glob well image equals to io.imread file again so in the first loop it's going to read scratch zero and then scratch one scratch two and so on okay and then for once the image is loaded it's going to calculate the entropy again just like the one uh, how we talked in our previous tutorial and uh, then it's going to apply the threshold again just like we have done in the last tutorial applies the threshold right there and then creates a binary image again all of these are lines that we have used in the previous tutorial right when we were trying to understand how to quantify this uh, this uh, uh, disorder uh, or texture okay so I create a new binary image and uh, it's nothing but all the pixels for entropy image where uh, it's less than or equal to threshold okay and then the scratch area is uh, sum of all the pixels where the value of binary equals to one right in this image all the values that are true or one are the ones with uh, you know low texture or low entropy so we are going to sum of all of that that is your scratched area every pixel we are counting it and I'm converting my scratch area into from pixel square to micron square by multiplying it by the scaling factor. And of course, I'm printing it out and uh, appending this to the list. OK, remember this time list that we created here. So within the for loop, I'm just saying, OK, after you calculate all of this to the time list, append time and then move on to the next one. OK, area list, because we are calculating area also here to the area list, append the scratch area that we are calculating right here. Again, if you're new to Python, go ahead and uh, uh, go through this code. Now, at the end of this, increase the time by one. If your time is 10 minutes, go ahead and change this to 10 minutes. OK, I'm just using units. One, two, three, four. OK, so after this for loop is done, we should have a list for time and a list for area that we can plot. That's it. OK, so how do you plot, plot it? Very simple. In uh, PyPlot, use plt.plot, time list, area list, and blue circles for data points. OK, so it's easy for us to um, read. Now, by the way, I'll record videos on uh, plotting altogether, you know, like separate videos for advanced plotting. But for now, let's actually keep it simple. Uh, but plotting, unfortunately, doesn't give you uh, the linear regression type of tools, but it's easy. So let's go ahead and fit a linear line, just like these guys have done here, right? Just fit a linear line to these data points and then get our equation right there, okay? And print out the R squared value and the equation. So how do we do that? Okay, let's go back to the code. First of all, from scipy.stats, import lin, lin regress, and linear regression is part of multiple libraries. Use whichever one you want, okay? scipy.stats, import linear regression, lin, lin regress, and when you apply lin regress to your data, which is you gotta have X and Y, right? When you apply lin, linear regression, or X is time and or Y is area. So when you apply this linear regression, it gives you one, two, three, four, five values out. As you can see, slope, intercept, R value, P value, and also standard error. Okay, so all of these values are given and then we are just printing them. That's it. So hopefully this is clear enough. Let's run these one by one. So let's run this one first. So it's doing all the calculation. You see, I'm printing it out after every step, right? So this print statement 
is what you're seeing here. So at zero, the scratch area is this, and as you can see, the scratch area is decreasing, and these are all in square microns. Now let's go ahead and plot it. So when I do the plotting, again, I'm plotting up here, so you can see this is how it is. It's not really very linear, but let's fit it to linear anyway. You can also fit it to a second order if you want. Okay, so how do we fit it? Again, let's run these lines and print out the values now. So let's run these. So there you go. So here is our equation. Our equation is y equals minus 507.2588, just like these guys did here. So minus y equals to minus something x and r squared value, they got 0.99. Obviously, our r squared will not be 0 0.99, 0 0.956, because this looks more curved than linear, okay? So here is how you can actually do scratch essay analysis with a few lines of code. This is literally, uh, I mean, this is, this is an essay that we are actually writing with a few lines of Python code. A great example, if you're brushing up your Python skills or if you're learning Python, a great way uh, to get into application-focused coding here, okay? So thank you very much again. And in the next tutorial, let's learn something new. Again, as usual, I request you to please go ahead and subscribe to this channel so you get notified whenever new content gets uploaded to our YouTube channel. And thank you very much.